Breaking tonight with political chaos breaking out on Capitol Hill and new problems for the president, his party, and their health care overhaul. We are just learning new details of an administration effort to blame the media, blame the insurance companies, and blame the Republicans for the nearly 6 million Americans who have now lost their health care. Welcome to a big night on The Kelly File, everyone. I'm Megyn Kelly. Let's pick it up just hours ago in Washington where Senate Democrats went nuclear, effectively undoing more than 200 years of precedent in a move that changed the Senate rules and now prevents Republicans from blocking the president on a host of issues, most importantly, judges. It effectively hobbles their ability to stop Barack Obama's nominees. Get ready for a big change on the federal bench. More on the significance of that in a moment. But first, consider the context. America today woke up to a new round of ugly headlines about Obamacare. For example, the Washington Post warned that Obamacare means some Americans won't have access to top hospitals in the country. We're working on a special report on that for you tomorrow night. The Han San Jose Mercury News pointing out that the next problem may be keeping your doctor. The Miami Herald writing about how the Obamacare website needs more time and more money for it to work. In the National Journal, a word of caution for Democrats saying recent Obamacare delays could explode on them in next year's midterms. And then there's this week's cover of Time magazine, playing off the president's broken promise with an image of a smashed Obamacare pill. Time magazine, folks, and the words broken promise. Chris Steyerwaltz is our Fox News digital politics editor and host of Power Play on foxnews.com live. I'm going to get to the blame game and the new strategy of blame everyone else but yourself in a second. But first, let's start with this, this move they did today, effectively eliminating the right of the majority and the minority to object to judicial nominees in the Senate, contrary to basically this entire country's history of precedent on this issue. Obviously, according to most pundits, Chris, an attempt to distract from the disastrous rollout of Obamacare, but it could be a disaster in its own right in terms of precedent in the U.S. Senate. Your thoughts? Well, count me then in the minority uh, in, the, in the universe of punditry because I don't think this is a distraction. It's not much of a distraction for regular Americans given the headlines you just showed. Uh, I don't think anything that Harry Reid does with Senate procedure is going to distract people from losing their health insurance or losing their doctor. Uh, what I do think this is, is an example of a presidency in crisis and a president increasingly beholden to a liberal base that he is relying on to get him through what promises to be many painful months of this rollout. Dragging forward, uh, the president is going to ground, he's going to his base. Uh, Harry Reid wouldn't have done this, and the president certainly wouldn't have w walked out moments afterward to bless it. Uh, if this wasn't a part of the plan, if this wasn't part of the team, uh, and you see the president very much trying to fire up the base, give them what they want, which are liberal judges on the federal bench, uh, and try to move forward with his core supporters as the rest of the country seems to lose confidence in him this, and his administration. All right, so maybe it fires up some, some on, the, on the far left, but how does this help him at all with the people in the middle uh, in any way? It's like, it's like you've got a guy, an executive who's, you know, embezzling from his company and every headline is he's embezzling he's embezzling he's embezzling and then he releases through his press people oh look he had an affair too i mean it's like uh, how wait how does that help i'm not sure about the analogy uh but i can say this counselor that at a moment when the president of the united states sees himself up upside down with public trust and confidence that's the killer that's the one when the people don't trust you. It's one thing if they think you're bad at your job. Americans in the past have thought that Barack Obama was bad at his job. But when he had to come out and say, I meant for these policies to be destroyed and deceived you about that intention, when he had to do that, he went all whopper jawed in the public polling on their confidence and trust in him to do back. the right thing and be the right guy. He, he has and not you're not been able get to stop the bleeding so far. Right. Okay, but listen, so now we learn, because he pulls in all these liberal talk show hosts and, and radio pundits. I mean, it's, a, it's an amazing thing to wa watch Ed Schultz walk into the White House. I mean, as an advisor, as, what, I don't, as, a, as a messenger, I don't know as what. Okay, but it happened. Um, and there's Al Sharpton, among others. 
And the message, our own Juan Williams was included in this powwow, and he reported earlier on Fox News that this is a White House that is, there he is, that is fired up, ready to fight back, and that the plan in part, Chris, is to, we heard earlier this week, blame Republicans. We heard that directly from the president. But now they want to blame the insurance companies because they sent letters that said you're canceled. And that was, that was bad political terminology for the White House. And they want to blame the media because apparently they don't like those headlines that we just showed on this show, nor do they like the headlines that are being seen around the nation every day and have been for weeks and will be for weeks more. Well, they've been trying that stuff for weeks, which is it's the Republicans' fault because they haven't helped us implement it. And it's the insurance industry's fault. And they've tried many iterations of this. The president was only in abject apology mode for, it seemed like, about 36 hours. And then he was back to the other thing. I think that the reason that you have the, these liberal talkers at the White House today, uh, especially people like Ed Schultz, is the president, it's not that he's trying to get their advice, he's trying to keep them on board. And that his promise is, if you'll just stick with me a little bit longer, we will get these policies out the door and give away this stuff, and we're gonna get there. You just gotta ride it out with me. Let me manipulate you, media people. Come on in, <laughs> let the manipulation begin. Well, we'll see it's whether there's compliance. All right, thanks, Chris. You bet. We're going to have much more on that uh, coming up a little bit later in the show. Back now to what happened in the Senate today. Just one week after President Obama said he wanted to remake the courts and was in the process of remaking them, the Democrat majority overturned 200 years of precedent, changing the Senate rules in order to take away the Republicans' ability to block any of the president's judicial nominees. It doesn't right now apply to the Supreme Court, but some believe it will. Remember... When Democrats were in the minority just a few years ago, they were totally opposed to this, including then-Senator Barack Obama. If the right of free and open debate is taken away from the minority party and the millions of Americans who ask us to be their voice, I fear that the already partisan atmosphere in Washington will be poisoned to the point where no one will be able to agree on anything. This nuclear option is ultimately an example the arrogance of power. It is a fundamental power grab. For people to suggest that you can break the rules to change the rules is un-American. The nuclear option, if successful, will turn the Senate into a body that could have its rules broken at any time by a majority of senators unhappy with any position taken by the minority. It begins with judicial nominations. Next will be executive appointments, and then legislation. That doesn't serve anyone's best interest, and it certainly isn't what the patriots who founded this democracy had in mind. I say to my friends on the Republican side, you may own the field right now, but you won't own it forever. And I pray God when the Democrats take back control, we don't make the kind of naked power grab you are doing. Should have prayed harder. Jay Sekulow is chief legal counsel for the American Center for Law and Justice. And Jay, I realize that this is a look over here, look over here, don't pay any attention to this thing, Obamacare. But this right. thing they've done over here is important and could Wait. change the face of our judiciary for years to come. Put it in context. Well, it's huge for two reasons. Number one, you mentioned the fact that these judges now get through against 225 years of Senate precedent. Uh, you, as you mentioned, the then senators, now now president and vice president, opposed the uh, attempt or even discussion of a nuclear option back in 2005. They were disgusted by it. The, the indignance. Yes. And, and here's the other thing, though. Realize the president right now, with the Obamacare rollout disaster, not just the website, the whole law of just imploding, the regulatory process, the administrative regulatory process, is going to be utilized by this White House in ways we've never imagined. Who approves and reviews those challenges to the administrative processes? The D.C. Court of Appeals, what's called the second most powerful court in the land. And the fact of the matter is, this was a court stacking move. And the American people, you know, are going to be paying the price for this because it really does change the entire way the Senate was designed since our founding. But look, it's good for the goose. It's going to be good for the gander. And this will come back. And I don't think it's going to come back. By the way, I think Supreme Court nominees aren't going to be off the table either. I don't think 
legislations off the table. I think what Harry did today was use the nuclear option. And Megan, when you use a nuclear weapon, there's mass destruction. You and know, that's what's happened. Barack Obama's gotten Elena Kagan, Elena Kagan on the U.S. Supreme right. Court, Sonia Sotomayor. Now, these are justices that clearly are on the left side of the ideological spectrum. Right. But they had to be confirmed by the U.S. Senate. Imagine who he's going to nominate if he doesn't think he has to get them past Republicans basically at all. I mean, who will right. we wind up with? And he, the president said he wants to remake the federal judiciary. And you can imagine the image in which that is going to be remade. Because when you look at Elena Kagan and Justice Sotomayor, I suspect they will look moderate compared to who some of these judicial nominees will be. And I do think that the Supreme Court is not going to be immune uh, from this change in the rules. I think they're going to use it at the Supreme Court if they have to. Uh, and the Republicans better toughen up, too. And that means when they're back in power and when the Senate's controlled by Republicans, if there was a Republican in the right, White House, and there will be. Uh, the fact of the matter is they need to play tough, too, because it's good for both. This is not well, a one-way ratchet here. Let's play this the is Chuck, serious on both sides. Let's play the Chuck Grassley sound by quickly. Listen here. Yep. If the Democrats are bent on changing the rules, then I say, go ahead. There are a lot more Scalia's and Thomas's out there that we'd love to put on the bench. I mean, are they doing this at their own peril, Jay? Oh, they are. I, you know, I'd add Justice Alito to that as well. And I think the fact of the matter is uh, this, was a, a, this was a very short-sighted move on behalf of the Democrats who were outraged and incensed that this was even being discussed, uh, let alone put into practice. Uh, they've changed the rule. They've dropped the nuclear option. Uh, and there's going to be nuclear fallout and nuclear waste. And I think the American people are going to realize it'll affect Obamacare, too, because, Megan, again, the administrative process that's going to be utilized it's here to point. implement this is going to go right through this. And Absolutely. Who, and who's going to be reviewing those challenges? Well, there's certainly hypocrisy on both sides. Republicans were all for it when they were considering it, but they never did it. Jay, thanks never for being it. here. All right. Thanks, Megan.